Hello, thank you for visiting Future Creative. Today I will show a basic technique to record rain for a background sound effects track. We will also take a look at simple EQ and compression for bringing out the best qualities of the sound. I'll start off with these images to show microphone placement and highlight a couple of choices. First off, I chose to record over this bed of rocks because it provided a more interesting texture than the raindrops falling on a sidewalk or the grass of the lawn. And the other concern is I wanted to make sure that the stereo image was as wide and natural sounding as possible, so I brought the microphone up to the very edge of the windowsill rather than having it further back in the room pointed out. As far as level goes, I would normally try to have my peaks between negative 12 and negative 6, but in this case, the sound I was recording is quiet enough that the best I could do is turn up the preamp all the way. Now that we're in our audio editor, we have one audio track on which I've dropped our raw recording. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and expand this track and rename it Rain SFX. I do this so we can get a better view of the waveform, makes it a lot easier to pick out any issues uh, like raindrops that may have fallen near or on the microphone, uh, wind gusts, or plane flying overhead. Uh, in particular, I know that for the first five minutes of this recording, I was in the room taking pictures of the, the setup, so I'm going to go ahead and just avoid that. This may be where I closed the door finally. It sure is. Okay, so we're just going to call that the beginning of the clip and slide it to the beginning of the timeline so that we don't accidentally render it out with a huge gap right at the beginning. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just drop in a simple EQ. We don't need any of this low-end information here. So I will make a steep low cut and I will roll that up to where it starts to really affect the sound. There it starts to get unrealistic and lose some of that bottom end that we do want. So I will back it off, go ahead and say 130, good enough for now. And then we're going to begin our editing process. I like to zoom in to where it's 10 or 15 second chunks. And just start skipping around, listening for any potential problems. Right here, visually, in the waveform, we can see something is going on. And just for curiosity's sake, I'm going to take the low, pa uh, low cut off. And it's very gentle, but you can see uh, there is some wind there. So that is how um, the low cut helps us right away. need this in our way right now. Follow along. Sometimes I find it helpful to use this feature here. It makes it so that the waveform will scroll across the screen following the playhead. Uh, sometimes I find when I'm jumping around, 
it sort of uh, skips a little much. It's distracting and tires out your eyes a little faster. So usually I'll just go by one piece at a time. Now right here, I do hear a plane. So I'm gonna drop a marker where I first start to hear that. Really here is the first time that starts to pop up. I'm gonna drop a locator there. Find where that plane has passed completely. We no longer hear it. Wind gust here. Definitely want to get past that. It would have been simple enough to record with a windscreen, but I did not think of that ahead of time. So I'll just use basic editing to get rid of some of that. It's just the faintest bit of that plane or perhaps a car driving by right in here. I'm going to pass that up. I'm going to take this out. Make sure we trim this clip all the way back to that marker where we indicated that we first heard that plane. Uh, also, when I'm doing finer editing like this and I want to be able to stay off of the grid, I don't want to be forced to, to snap into a quantization. So turn that grid off now i can click anywhere instead of it being locked to the grid I'll slide that over just a couple of seconds and do a little crossfade give it a listen Sounds pretty smooth, but I actually do think I heard a bit of that plane flying overhead. Back it up a little more and do that over again. Take a listen. Sounds good enough. So then I'll continue skipping ahead in five or 10 seconds at a time until I start to hear a problem or I notice a major part of the waveform sticking out. So right here, just a little bit of wind noise. Go ahead and check out four. After that, no major issues. So simple enough to just grab that, pull it out, overlap by a couple of seconds, crossfade. That sounds good too. Moving right along.
just going along here and hunting for any problems. Some people are going to find that it's easier to just sit and listen. For me, I want to make this process go by a little faster. It's not that pleasant to listen to it starting and stopping all the time, but it certainly saves a lot of time. Obviously, we start to hear another plane going by. We'll find the beginning of that. Starts right about there. Drop in my marker and find the end of that plane flying overhead. is now it's directly overhead tails probably here somewhere off in the left channel only more obvious bits of the waveform sticking up here, so we'll explore that. Nothing major. I'm sure if we did not have that low cut, we would probably hear that. Very subtle. So it's not necessary to edit it out, but just because it makes me happy, we'll go ahead and delete after that. Slide it over, and just a couple of seconds is all that's needed. A little bit farther, actually. And we'll do a crossfade here. And you'll notice as I pull the crossfade, the, the waveform shifts, so it, it really can help us smooth that out if it's right in the middle of it. And it sounds great. So we can move right along. Five, ten seconds at a time, just searching for the next issue. There's an obvious part of the waveform again. Looks like our low cut took care of that, just for... Sure enough, got some low-end information from wind. And with the low cut, it's pretty much not there, so let that take care of it. Basically just listening for the next time we have a plane fly overhead. This being a stereo recording, I'm going to make sure I keep an eye on both waveforms. They are not at all the same. But then when you see a transient that occurs on both, sometimes it's just that gust of wind again. Let's see. Very subtle. No need to worry about that.
Probably some wind here. Nothing too apparent, nothing the low cut didn't already take care of. Now, it would be simple enough to just get a good clean 10 minutes and loop it, but there are some subtleties that will sort of uh, make that not the smoothest way to take a long track. It's going to sound a lot more natural if you capture a longer recording and you have that progression of rain. If it starts to get a little bit heavier, that's going to happen naturally over time and really allow that atmosphere to stay in the background and not be disruptive to any dialogue or storytelling that's going on. So I like to take a longer recording in this case rather than doing a loop. Uh, if at the beginning we have lighter rain, later we have heavier rain, and we crossfade several times, that's really just going to become apparent that we've created a loop. So here we have another larger part of the waveform. We want to see what that is. Probably wind again. Sure enough, big, horrible wind sound. Even with the low cut, it's still very obvious. So we are going to just go ahead and edit that out. Overlap by just a couple of seconds. Do a crossfade. Check it out. Rain starts to pick up significantly here. Nothing major going on. That was a mistake. Control Z to undo that. Use the, the bar up here to scrub, not moving the clip itself. Going along, looking for the next thing that we would like to remove. The, right here, it seems like either that's wind or one of the raindrops actually contacting the mic. So we're just going to grab that, delete it, slide it over a couple of seconds, make a crossfade. Not too bad, nothing major there. like yet again our low cut is helping us out quite a bit here this looks like a major issue even with the low cut that is still audible so we're just going to cut that out same thing rinse and repeat a couple of seconds overlap crossfade. Just check it real quick. Good enough. Moving right along. And that seems to be me entering the room again, so we will cut it off right about there. Just make sure 
sure it's clean to the end. It is. So we have about 18 minutes of rain. And I want to go ahead and make sure this is out as one track. Not uh, with all of these edited in it. We'll consolidate to one clip. Okay, now that we have one clip, we can go ahead and grab that. This waveform is, is showing as it renders. Uh, we can go ahead and edit without worrying about that anyway. Just going to get rid of these markers. Select the clip, push Control D to duplicate. Zoom out. Overlap by just a few seconds. That crossfade and check it. Here, this is what I was explaining before. The rain is a little bit heavier at the end of the 18 minutes and compared to the beginning. So I'm using a longer crossfade to smooth that out, make it a little less obvious. It seems like naturally the rain is lightening up just a little bit. So with those two combined, that gives us 35 minutes. That is plenty long to cover a scene. And then real quickly, we will shape the tone of this uh, just to give it a little more character. First thing I'm going to do is explore a low cut. There is some of this just general atmosphere noise that I don't need to be part of this track. Then I want to see about what's going to happen in the high end if I crank that up to the extreme. There's some information there. Wouldn't hurt. Uh, I'm going to not do that though. And see about in the middle. I'm going to find Great. This area it reads as water. In this area it starts to read more like a sizzling bacon or something. So just a wide band cut there. And something I like to do for just personal preference is I will take a bell curve to a very narrow cue. I like to find that sound that's sort of like like pop rocks in your mouth. Up just a little bit. I like to take that out for me. It's just a sound that isn't really needed. Again, keeping it pretty narrow. It's just sort of a notch to, to remove. To me, that's just frequency I don't I don't like having in there. So that's good enough. Another thing that we can do, do a little bit of dynamics processing. So we'll take that high end, reduce it, compress it a little bit, and bring it out. And then let's see what's It's most useful in that area. And then the low end, I want to find a frequency that's a little more present. There's nothing down here. Maybe like six. Bring our threshold over. Bring it up, make those drops a little more present.
uh, more you can hear it sort of falling with that low end it makes it sound more on a roof on the on the skin of a tent mid-range that sizzling just gonna let it be what it is See, go back and see how we've affected this. This is that, that pop rock sound. That's gone, that's cleaned up. And then with the dynamics processing, off and on. A little more darker, bigger character to it. Another thing I like to do is I will gain it up a little bit, kind of overdrive, and I'll bring the threshold of a compressor down, start catching it that sort of levels it out, makes it a little more consistent. I'm going to bring down the range. Don't need it to do anything too extreme, but I do want it to be pretty quick. Get that needle moving just a little more actively. Let's have a listen to what that does. Sort of just smooths it out just a little bit. Close those up. Pretty much got it sounding the way we want but now we want to pay attention to our level here. So we're looking at, it's, it's in range, but maybe we don't want someone to have to amplify this. So we will head and drop in this utility. We're just gaining it up a little bit more. And if you mix it down quieter, useful. But it's very smooth and consistent. So nobody that has this effect has to do much work with it after the fact. So there you have it. We have uh, 40 minutes of rain. We have edited out the undesired parts like uh, traffic passes or planes flying overhead. Uh, certainly the birds are something that I personally think really helps it read as rain tells us that we're outside, gives it that wider sense of realism and atmosphere. And then the low cut to keep the information on the low end cleaned up out of there completely, uh, takes some of that low mid range out just to bring each individual droplet sound out uh, multi-band dynamics uh, which is is really a, a multi-band compressor in a way and uh, then another compressor after that to sort of smooth out the overall level which allows us to bring it up a little bit without having too much variance and that is my take on this process to getting a very polished background sound effects track. I hope this was helpful and education to you. Uh, feel free to comment below about effects that you would like to see me do a treatment of. I'll be more than happy to produce the videos that you want to see. And of course, like and subscribe and share this video if you found this helpful and you want to help me grow. Thank you.